What up, players? What about stay up in this mood? Welcome back to our War Boss tutorial, how to paint a dire wolf. Look at this thing, so gross. If you haven't seen part one yet, then check it out. Oh, look at this poor doggy. Oh, this poor doggy. Oh, it has rabies. Oh, we need to we need to keep painting. Oh, so gross. So, the next step in painting our little poochie here is a bad dad black wash. And all you're gonna do is put that wash directly onto your brush, load it up, and I like to start from the top and work my way down. So, oh, oh, so gross. Look at this guy, ooh. This poor doggy. So you wanna make sure it goes in all the areas it's gonna provide really great shading, but just wanna be really even with it. Especially on any large areas of bone or exposed bone. And around here, this mane for the creature, you wanna make sure it gets in all the all the little nooks and crannies here. Okay, one of the hardest parts to get evenly if this is the first time you're doing it is getting all the angles. So down here between its little poochy legs, underneath the underneath its rib cage. I want to make sure you give enough that it pulls naturally. And because these are darker models, skeletons and these dire wolves definitely. What I mean by darker, I mean it's I started with a dark base coat. We're adding lots of washes to really goth it up. You can be quite liberal with your washes. The danger is you don't want to just go nuts and and load your brush so completely with the wash that it obscures all detail. You want it to seep naturally into the cracks and crevices and create those natural shadows. So like here I'm working on the main and you want to make sure that the wash goes in without obscuring the, the detail. Here in the face, you want it to go into all the, the holes and the recesses without pooling unnaturally in the lowest sections. Can you believe it's almost Friday? It's Thursday when I'm filming this. I'm so happy for the weekend. What you'll notice that the red also does, or the, the bad eye black also does, is that it gets into these red bloody bits and creates really nice contrasting shades, especially where it meets the skin. So you wanna toy around with that with your brush a little bit. Create some, some great little little details for you. So what happened there was that there's a large bit of wash right on that one area. And while I was drying, I went to the, drying. I went to the other side and painted. And then when I came back and moved the wash, it had left this watermark. So be careful that you don't leave any watermarks on the larger surface areas. For now, it's okay. I'm gonna just let that sit like it is, and maybe I'll highlight it and wash it again. But just want to be careful. The danger of using washes is that it's so good that it fools you into thinking that you can't make any mistakes with it. But if you leave it in one area too long you try to move it around and it will bite you in the hand. Not literally. Metaphorically, master. Yes, Igor, yes, metaphorically. So, I'm deciding to paint up Lewis after this. I think he'll be quite happy. 
painting up this pimp ride um, because I hear corpse carts are pretty good in this edition in the new book so I want to give him a little little pimp ride to ride around so you see in the last video where we painted the Deneb stone on and then we paint the Ogren flesh wash now that with the black wash over it it really looks a lot darker brown the skin tone is a lot darker and more sinister and I think that's really good use use the wash however you want to your best advantage and now I'm trying to even out that watermark by covering it a little bit more but I might have to go back and reapply Deneb Stone. You get almost a, a Kemri Brown kind of kind of tone, which I like. I didn't want to do straight Kemri Brown because when you have Ogre Flesh Wash over a Deneb Stone, you get almost a, a pinker shade than you would. It's somewhere between a mix between Den uh, Kemri Brown and Talarn flesh, I believe, which is really cool. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry for a while, then we're gonna come back when it's dry and leave it for about uh, 45 minutes, let's say, maybe, and maybe go out, eat another Happy Meal, and then I'll come back and get on to the next section. Right, now we're gonna get into highlighting. First thing we're gonna highlight back up is the Deneb stone for the bone. Try to get this done as quickly and effectively as possible because I would hate to go to a part three of this video. It takes so long to render. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the bone areas and I'm highlighting them through the center trying not to trying not to obscure the, the shading work the best are these ribs the rib cage so much fun to paint. Exposed rib cage. Awesome is that. You're gonna find a lot of exposed bones. So just paint those all back up, here at the back of the legs, the feet, sticking up through the vertebrae, popping out through the, the ribs. I think these are some of the best models in the range. A lot of people don't even consider taking them because I guess they have a hard way, hard time of working them into their their tactics or their army list or play style or their their meta. But I am more of a painter, so I just want them to look good. Hopefully, they'll look so good that if I field them. My opponent will waste time and resources to get rid of them. Too much water there. So just like in the skeleton painting tutorial, you gotta be careful with your application of Deneb Stone if you put too much water then it'll pool into the resources 
<laughs> recesses, resources. If you don't put enough water, then it will be too thick. And then you'll have very obvious stroke lines. And I hate that. I hate being able to see my brush, individual brush strokes. I really like achieving the uh, the blend, like here in the skull. If you see, I'm trying to go for for a a, a good natural blend rather than seeing very obvious highlights. So that means that I'm using as little paint on the brush as I can, and then I am dragging out the paint as much as possible. So sometimes you want to use horizontal brush strokes, like I'm using for this vertebrae column, and sometimes I want to use vertical ones, especially if you're dry brushing, vertical works best. Or like here, where I'm painting the teeth, I'm going from top to bottom, so I get I get that effect. Oh, look at the puppy. Look at the cute puppy. I had a puppy once, Master. Did you, Igor? Oh, yes. When I was a boy. Where is he now? In the ground. Oops. some of the shading as much as I can so you have to pick and choose where where you use horizontal and where you use vertical brush strokes brush strokes there we go okay next step is we're gonna build on this just like in the skeleton tutorial with bleached bone Using even less, having our Kleenex or napkin close by to wipe off excess paint so that we're getting only the bare minimum. Now we're also even concentrating more on hitting only the edges where the light would hit. So you see I'm not painting the bottom half of the bone, I'm only painting the top half of the bone on his leg. Or I'm only painting the very top of these bones sticking out of the skin structure. Gradual highlights. When I first started, I, I when I first started painting, I remember thinking when I was highlighting that, oh, the color looks so good. I want to just, when I was highlighting, I want to spread it out across the whole surface area. But what that does is you, you cover up and obscure the work you just did because you're so interested in highlighting, showing off that highlight color. So you want to avoid that as much as possible. Or I do anyway. Everybody's different. Hey, if you've got your own tips on how you paint your Direwolves, I'd love to see it as a video response. Leave a comment if any, you do anything differently. Because I know other people out there have to use these guys. I can't be the only one that's thinking of fielding them. Last highlight, 
in this section is skull white. And for this, we're only gonna be looking at the very tippity tops of each section that we've already highlighted. And we're gonna leave the smaller ones, like most of these bones sticking out, where only, for example, like this bone strapped to the wolf's foreleg, I'm only gonna be painting these top two bits right there. Without the majority of the model being in a previous color, your highlights are not gonna pop. So I'm painting just the barest amount. If I painted the whole mouth white, then you know you obviously wouldn't see as much of the highlights. All right, there you go, bones all highlighted. Okay, now that our highlights on the bones are done, we're gonna get work, get work on highlighting the fur. We're gonna use Codex Gray for this. Now you have two ways that you can do this. I'm gonna show you how to do both. The first way is taking a fine detail brush. You're going to look for the center of each strand of fur and you're going to drag your paint from the center outwards. The reason we're not going from the base of each fur is because as a highlight it'll catch the eye more if you don't start from the base. If you start all the way from the base then you're gonna kind of ruin the work you did as a highlight. So I'm just dragging the paint out. I mean the work, the work of the wash. I'm trying to gauge where the middle of each hair is and you don't have to hit every single one or else you'll go crazy. But you do want to hit generally anything that you would anything that would be caught by the light if it was standing upright. So I'm not gonna paint everything, all the hairs that are or fur pieces that are down here. But if it was standing up flat and the light was shining down on it, then you wanna be able to hit anything the light would reflect off of. This is one way of highlighting using your Codex Gray. This is actually the way that I prefer because the second way, dry brushing, does not give you as much control. This you really get to control yourself how much you paint each strand. Okay, so now I'll show you the second method. On this side, I'm gonna take a dry brush Or dry brush, please. Too small, small stick. Mm, really Shoot or bro. Then I'm going to put a little bit of paint on my dry brush, wipe most of it off on my palm, and then I'm going to dry brush starting from the top just like this and even this looks like there's still too much paint on the brush but I'm lifting the brush off almost immediately after this one you get a lot more coverage but it's a lot easier for you to for you to mess up if you put too much brush if you load your brush with too much paint 
You get a lot more done though, so that's the good thing about it. Let me show you another example. Here on this totally finished guy, I, I, I haven't highlighted the mane yet, so I'm just going to dry brush. Ah, you know what, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. Take back everything I said about it. Igor, yes master. I take back everything I said about dry brushing. I love it. Very well, master. Would you like me to edit or remove the post on dry brushing that you put on wall seer? Yes. I take back my rant that dry brushing is for stupid heads that don't know what they're doing. Dry brushing is awesome. Of course, it's situational, and you could end up with a ah, fireball to the face with a chalky, dusty effect. And um, like I said, each painter has different skills in his arsenal, but if you're painting up a bunch of these, you could do a lot worse than dry brushing. All right, and um, there you have it. You don't really have to highlight anything else because the prominent pieces are the hair, or the fur. Next thing I'm gonna show you is how I do my spooky green light eyeballs. You're gonna need scorpion green. And with a fine detail brush, I take some scorpion green, water it down just a little bit. And you're going to paint in the eyeball. Now you only want to do this for models that have the eyes, because I think it looks a lot creepier when the light comes from the eyes and empty, stock, uh, empty eye sockets stay empty. Gross. Okay, so once you've painted in the eye, next thing you're gonna do is you're going to wipe off the majority of your paint, and then almost like a dry brushing, you're going to paint the edges. Oh, there get this in focus a little bit. So I'm just wiping off the green color. You don't want to see, you definitely don't want to see any stroke lines. You don't want it to obscure the paint job underneath. You want to do it so lightly that the paint barely comes off the brush. There you have it. Alright players, this is my completed dire wolf and I'm going to leave the base as is because I'm going to do a tutorial on how I build my build my bases but like I said the great thing about these guys is that each one is packed with detail and the detail is all individual another thing oh I can show you before is that some of these models have what look like staples holding the skin pieces together you can really have a lot of fun with that you take some bolt gun metal. Get out of here. Find the uh, places that obviously look like staples holding the skin together. And just color those things in. You could also make them stitches, but um, that might not look as good. So, you know, it might not even show up on your model but I think it's totally totally fun like right here this there's an obvious piece of holding it there and if you get it um, on if you get that bolt gun metal on other areas then all you have to do is go back with some denim stone and the wash color and just do a little fix
can also use the denim stone as a highlight color to paint the edges of your skin, which I didn't really think about until just now. But since denim stone was the base color, you could do something, something like that to bring out the, the edges of these skin flaps. I think I have too much paint on my brush, but it's definitely something you can do. I kind of like the wash look though, so I'm going to leave the majority of it. Um, but I think it's cool having little metallic staples bolted into the skin. So there you go. I hope you like it. Don't forget to leave me a comment and hit the like button before you go. And we'll see you in the next video. Say goodbye, Igor. Goodbye, Igor.